Welcome to another video. Let's solve this equation here with an unknown x. And because it involves a factorial, we'll have to assume that x is an integer. In fact, it's a natural number because the factorial function is defined only for natural numbers, including 0. Including 0, yeah. We're not talking about the gamma function at this point. So, just looking at this, what would you do? Now, the right-hand side may be modified a little. What I want to show you is how to tackle this kind of problem anytime you see it. Okay? And I hope it, it's as easy as this because this one is pretty easy. And just by looking and plugging in numbers, you can guess what the answer is. I don't know what this is going to be, but let's just go. But just guess. By the time you try between the first and the tenth natural number, you're going to get your answer. But without... To minimize the number of guesses, why don't we just um, get into the video? So the first thing is use the definition for both sides, factor the right hand side, write the definition for this side. So what I'm going to do is say that x factorial can be written as x times x minus 1 factorial. And on the right hand side, I can factor out an x, so I say that x times x squared minus 1. So I can clearly see that there is an x here, there's also an x here. So I can divide both sides by x on one condition, if I know that x is not equal to 0. Okay, remember you can only divide both sides by any variable if you're sure the variable is not zero. So, can I divide both sides by x? Well, I have to quickly check. Is it possible for x to be zero? Well, go back and just do a mental check. What is zero factorial? Zero factorial is one. What is x, what is zero cubed? Zero cubed is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. One equals zero is not a true statement, so x is not zero. So. I can divide both sides since x is not equal to 0, then I have x minus 1 factorial is equal to x squared minus 1. So I have knocked out one of the guesses. So let's go to the next one. So x minus 1 factorial equals x squared minus 1. But one thing I can see right now is that x squared minus 1 contains x minus 1 when I factor this side. So, I'm going to complete this again and say that x minus 1 times x minus 2 factorial equals x minus 1 times x plus 1. I just factored the right hand side. Now I can divide both sides by x minus 1 on one condition. If x minus 1 is not equal to 0, because if x minus 1 equals 0, then x has to be equal to 1, right? So, I'm going to assume this is not equal to 0. Well, if it is equal to 0, we can just go back and check it, because then it means x equals 1. Well, let's go plug in 1. What is 1 factorial? It's 1. What is 1 cubed? Is 1 minus 1. Well, 1 equals 0. That, again, is not true. So x is not equal to 1, which means this is not equal to 0. Then I can divide both sides by x minus 1. Okay, we go on again. We can say since x is not equal to 1, then I can divide both sides by this. I have x minus 2 factorial is equal to x minus 1. Mm. Now this is looking juicy. Okay, so this is a bit complicated because we don't really, I don't know what to do with this. So I'm going to replace this y minus 2 with something, okay? So I'm just going to replace it with n. So let's say let n be equal to x minus 2, which implies if I need to replace this, I mean that x will be equal to n plus 2, okay? So now... I can rewrite this line as, instead of writing x minus 2 factorial, I'm going to write n factorial is equal to 
x minus 1 is going to be n plus 2. No, this is plus 1. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, n plus 2 plus 1. So this is x plus 1 is n plus 2 plus 1. So I have n factorial is equal to n plus 3. Now, this is where your life becomes very easy because here, factorial is such a rapid um, function such that you don't do additions. We're multiplying. So anytime you're, re you're writing an equation that connects a factorial to any addition or subtraction, you know the numbers are super small. Okay? Super small. You can't have big numbers when you have a link between a factorial and an addition. So, you'll have to start guessing which possible numbers are there. So we know zero is not our answer. We already eliminated that. Or is it possible for this to be zero? Well, let's see. Zero factorial is one. Well, one is not equal to three. So we get rid of that. One factorial doesn't work. So what about two? Two factorial is two. But two plus three is not, that's not work. That doesn't work. Let's try three. Three factorial is six. Oh, let's go. <laughs> that's it. N is three. By inspection, n equals 3. Okay? We have 3 factorial equals 6, which is equal to 3 plus 3. So, we've gotten our n. Let's go back and get what x is, because that's where we started. We said n is x minus 2. Okay, since n equals x, sorry, x equals n plus 2, let's clean that up. Since x equals n plus 2, what do we have? We have x will be equal to 3 plus 2, which is equal to 5. There we go. So the reason why we had to get to this point was just to make our guesses easier rather than doing multiple substitutions. Well, could you have guessed from the beginning using 1, 2, 3, and 4? Yeah, it's possible. But this just makes it nicer in case it gets more complicated these are steps for elimination until you get to something that is more relatable i hope this was helpful never stop learning those who stop learning stop living bye-bye